Georgetic Ankars here, and I just wanted to do part two of this video of the using the colors from the color wheel, our primary and secondary colors. So we finished this painting, and we were working on this painting. We're just waiting it, waiting for it to dry, and now we're going to um, talk a little bit about doing that same process with doing kind of abstraction and figures. So. I'm going to use the colors that I already kind of have uh, on my palette. And I'm going to do it with the brush, and I'm going to use a large brush. So I'm using a bristle brush, and it doesn't have to be, but I want a little bit of texture, and it's a number 12, and it's a flat brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the figure off first. And usually when I'm looking at the figure, I want to have a contrast again if I'm looking at the areas of the color wheel. So in this one, I kind of did these greens and yellows. So I had warm and kind of cool colors. For this one, I think I'm going to change it. And I think I might have um, maybe some purples and, and yellows or purples and blues. So let's change it and see what happens. This might be like a yellow, and this could be a purple, and a lighter purple, or we can do it with a red. So let's start with the yellow, and I'm just going to make this shape maybe it's like this, okay, and that's the top. And the thing is when you're making the shape, don't focus on it too much. The thing is you know, you start thinking about, oh, where should I put the, the pants? Just put it down. And what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put this as a purple. I'm going to have this figure moving. Kind of walking. It's got these bellow pants. You might have the other leg, and it's just a little mark that's coming through here. Okay? And let's give it a little heel. Okay, now what I might do is I'm going to have to do this area darker. So I'll show you, I could choose a really dark purple for this area, right? But I really wouldn't have that much of a contrast with this color. So I want to choose a color that would have a lot of contrast. And I have a couple of uh, colors that might do that. And the color that I'm thinking is like this turquoise blue. And the reason why I'm going to choose the turquoise blue is it's also, oops, sorry, it's still coming out, it's the last of the paint. <laughs> I'm going to choose the turquoise blue because the turquoise blue is going to be a great contrast and you can just see how nicely it works. So what you might want to do is when you're doing colors, you might put them next to each other and say, oh, does that yellow work? You know, good with this blue, how is it going to uh, work as far as the contrast? And when you're putting on the paint, I usually think of that. And you can only do that by sometimes working the cool colors against the warm colors and seeing what kind of contrast that you might want to make. And you see I can kind of color the figure in. This could also be a mixture, you know, if you wanted to, of blue and if you had like some green, you could change it. The other thing that you could do is you could go in between these empty spaces. You know, the only reason why I left those empty spaces is I'm just not really painting an exact hold painting. I'm just showing you how to do the figure fast with these gestural drawings. But what I might do is if I wanted a contrast, right, I could just drag a brush, and I'll show you, over these light areas, barely touching them. And do you see what happens? So we could pick up a little bit of the color of this figure. I might make his face a little bit bigger here. In contrast, we're bringing in. But you can do that. And you can do it in opposite colors. So if you had where these empty spaces are, they don't have to be a yellow. You could think about just bringing highlights. You see how that red just like vibrates against that blue? Let me just take a red here and drag it down so you can see what I mean. 
It really has a vibe. It really vibrates. So try doing that. Try playing with colors. Maybe color a whole or half of your watercolor paper blue and just put colors on top and see what colors add that contrast. And then you can say, okay, that's what I want to use in my painting because now I see how that color just vibrates on top. Okay, and then, so try this, try a bunch of, and when you're doing the figure, you know, just put the figure down. And the faster you do the figure, you know, because something might just happen as you're putting the figure down. You just don't know what's going to happen. Um, the slower that you start thinking about the figure is when you kind of, you know, get stuck. And you're like, well, I don't know if I should drag this leg down. So just practice doing these figure drawings. Just practice doing the head first like I did in the body and just pulling the legs down, you know. You could um, then you can practice on doing the background contrasting colors and maybe the shadows um, coming from the figures. But start again, like I said, just taking a regular piece of paper like this and maybe trying an exercise like this and seeing what colors contrast each other. Now, of course, this would work well with the contrasting color with the blue, right? You could even have a lighter purple here if you wanted. Um, you know, you could have a yellow shadow. Just try to be as creative. Take your time. Don't rush. And realize that even if you make a mistake and you don't like the color, you can change it. And that give yourself a chance to, to grow and experiment. The other thing is, you could also add colors on top. So if you wanted, like, this is a figure from the back, you could add a little bit of hair on top. And maybe the whole uh, figure or the figure a point is going to be the head you know if you wanted this brighter you instead of adding a purple right you might have added a yellow right that would be a really con that would be contrasting to this darker red okay and you could add f clothing on the figure that would be of a contrasting color you know you could add a blue um, top on a red figure that's something you could do you know you could drag that brush down, you know, you could add something there and you could put different. So see how that already works. And you're not really thinking about doing the whole shape either. You're kind of just putting the blue where you think that that might be that shape um, of the chest area. And then you could do the same for the pants, you know. So think about it. And then after you do the background color and the shape of the figure, maybe the clothing, then you can think about the shadows, you know, like where are the shadows coming from, you know, when they're walking? How are they walking? Are they behind them? Are they in front of them? Think of where the shadows are. And you can do those in a contrasting color. You can do it in the color as, as far as the, maybe the color of the figure and the ground that the figure is on. So if the figure was on a green ground, right, it could be a darker green for the shadow because there's no light in the shadow. Or what you could do is if the finger, figure was wearing purple pants and they were standing on a yellow uh, sidewalk, you could have brown, which would be a combination of the purple and the yellow. So just think about color combinations, start using the wheel, and just start experimenting. And I'll see you in class. Ciao.